Let's get Mr. Echidnut's review about episode 16 and Subaru's new ability. They skipped the opening because every second of this episode was filled with something remarkable. We got some incredible voice acting, Glaze. a lot of character development, Glaze. the return of some of my favorite season one Glaze. OSTs, a bit of humor, surprisingly good animation, good pacing, shaded yeah. ears, T poses, double head pats, and even best girl. Not ten to out mention, of ten. Subaru also gained a new ability and a valuable ally. But starting chronologically, the opening scene was a bit shocking. Even as a novel reader, I was kind of shook at how brutal this was. Garfield bashes the Ooh. wall with his face, trying to forget his trauma. And the I don't know how the fucking headbutt created an X like that. Like that's, <laughs> I know it's not a point to nitpick. There's no need to, but it's just like, what a, what a clean cut off of bashing your head. Scar left on his forehead has since been a permanent reminder of his failure. They did a great job at making this look like a horror scene, especially with the lack of color in everything except the blood. I thought it made a lot of sense for Amelia to be the first one to call Garfield out. Because of all the characters, she's probably the one who can best understand him as both Amelia and Garfield have struggled with overcoming their past. That's right. And like the entire reason that he's being an antagonist right now is for Amelia's sake because she he understands the trauma for her. But now if she's talking on behalf of herself, you can no longer insert yourself and say, think about how Amelia feels. Nah, she's telling you to fucking move forward too. Coming their past. Subaru was also able to understand Garfield because of what he learned from his conversation with Ryuzu Arma in episode 39. The fight between Garfield and Subaru was a bit lengthier in the novels, but I still th Do you know why I literally said there's no need to nitpick? It's because of dumb motherfuckers like you that always want something clever to say to be part of the fucking joke. You don't need to fucking type that. I've already put the precautions there so that you monkeys can't come at me saying that bullshit. So instead, I'm going to put you in detention. Goodbye. Sense for Amelia to be the first one to call Garfield out. Because of all the characters, she's probably the one who can best understand him as both Amelia and Garfield have mm -hmm. struggled with overcoming their past. Subaru was also able to understand Garfield because of what he learned from his conversation with Ryuzu Arma in episode 39. The fight between Garfield and Subaru was a bit lengthier in the novels, but I still think this episode had excellent pacing, and it was also very refreshing to see Subaru being confident again. <laughs> You guys saw that, right? He straight up just took a punch to the face without yeah. even flinching and then spit his tooth out like yep. it didn't mean shit to him. That scene was fucking hardcore, man. Yeah, that's probably the coolest super has ever been. But apparently, the cut content is the crystal that's sucking mana out of Garfield is still embedded in the source material. Therefore, he was really weak right now after being this, you know, damaged. So, I mean, it doesn't take away from Subaru's, like, Giga Chadness, but it's a little thing to think about. And what else was I going to say over here? I'm not sure. Been flinching and then spit his tooth out like it didn't mean shit to him. That scene was fucking hardcore, man. Especially if you consider how powerful Garfield's punches can really be. Something True, right? True. Like shit like this. Fucking punch, punch the tree like that. Does that mean Subaru has now shown amazing durability on top of his strength in Arc 1? I don't think so. I don't think this is something we should be fixated on thinking, oh my god, super, superhuman durability. I, I do not think that at all. But regarding the other thing about how finally it's looking triumphant, yes, this moment to see super confident again, it is a breath of fresh air because the entirety of season two leading up till now, until a couple episodes ago, like 13 episodes, 13 or 14 episodes is just pure L taking loss after loss, screaming, depression, just suffering over and over. And it's just like, oh my fucking God. When are we going to have some moment of like a triumphant comeback? This is it. We're getting there now. If you consider how powerful Garfield's punches can really be. Something we'll be able to understand better in the future is how important Garfield's development truly was. This episode relieved Garfield of his status as an antagonist, turning him into an ally. <laughs> The bunny in the middle? Where's Mady at? Antagonist turning him into an ally instead. And with the raw strength of Garfield at his disposal, Subaru's odds of defeating his other opponents mm -hmm. are now significantly increased. That's right. Garfield is now going to help us fight against Mady and Elsa at the mansion if we can get him over there after clearing the sanctuary. This is looking good. Defeating his other opponents are now significantly increased. Remember though. I don't know how we're going to beat the rabbit though. We got to use Roswell to bait. 
And then we need a gigantic nuclear explosion like ability. Maybe Roswell will also have that. Maybe we'll call Reinhardt over. Maybe we can force Mady to control these things, but I doubt a great witch fiend can be controlled by Mady like that unless it's by like an Archbishop of Gluttony. Remember though, just because Garfield was an antagonist doesn't mean he was a villain. In other words, Garfield did nothing wrong. Still chopped Otto in half. Garfield is an obstacle. He's not a villain. He's just in the opposing side of the protagonist out of Subaru. I still don't really consider Roswell an antagonist. Well, I don't really consider Roswell a villain really either. A lot of people seem to have this misconception that like, it's because of him everything is going wrong. You could also say the exact same thing else, that it's because of him everything has gone right so far. Of course, at the cost of Subaru suffering, but I'm just glad that this fucking Garfield shit is over with because I'm, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I have no personal fucking connections to Garfield and his bullshittery and his fucking past. And thank God we got the closure and this fucking cat can just chill the fuck out and just help us now. Antagonist doesn't mean he was a villain. In other words, Garfield did nothing wrong. He did a couple things wrong. Even when he murdered all those innocent people, remember that he was in his beast form. And in his beast form, he's no longer Garfield. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're gonna try to fucking take that away from Garfield because he was in beast form? Nah, he did that shit. Own up to it. Move on. I don't care. He did it. He killed him. That's what he felt he needed to do. That's not the Garfield we're working with right now. We move on. I don't condemn him for it. Stop thinking because after transforming, his human logic and morality are replaced with the primal instincts of an enraged predator. And that's why he always transforms before a fight. It's All not right. because he needs the extra strength. The reason he transforms is because he doesn't want to kill anyone. Garfield can't. What a pussy. He straight up uses the beast form to just like offload the guilt of killing. That's crazy. Genuinely coward. Yes. Damn. And now maybe what Subaru and Ram was saying during the episode makes a little bit more sense. I thought it was funny when Subaru was like, Hey, pussy, stop relying on that power, your blood. Stop being a coward and relying on that blood and fight me. I thought that was like him being like, Ain't no way I can fight you in that tiger form. But like in human form, maybe. But this now adds a lot more depth to his character. Transforms before a fight. It's not because he needs the extra strength. The reason he transforms is because he doesn't want to kill anyone. Interesting. Garfield can't handle that kind of guilt. So if he feels like he has no other option, then it's easier on him to just turn his brain off beforehand. His yeah, and Ram has pretty much told Garfield to do that beyond just the fucking transforming too. Transformation is a means of escape. So by transforming during his argument with Subaru, Garfield essentially admitted to kill. he was wrong. He subconsciously realized that he didn't even believe his own argument. So ah, that's what that could also mean. Too. That's interesting. So are we ever going to have a situation where Garfield can, can have complete control over this beast form? Because this feels like Monster Point in One Piece for Chopper. There's like a form that Chopper, the reindeer, takes and he loses all sanity. And, he, and he's fucking terrifying. It's like a monster, truly. At least that's pre-time skip. Post-time skip. <sighs> they ruined the character. And he has complete control over it. And now it's just a cute little thing. It's, it's big. So will Garfield also be able to control it? So that if he is an ally, he doesn't just like start doing friendly fire. He doesn't start attacking anyone without reason. Will he just stay in this berserker? Because like, I'm thinking like beyond the mansion, I'm thinking like arc, uh, arc 5, season 3. Garfield will surely be a main character like a warrior during the, the fights, right? For sure he has to be. Wonder how that's gonna work out. He subconsciously realized that he didn't even believe his own argument, so his- Frederica can control her form because she has less blood though. She got quarter blood. Garfield got double- Garfield has like a half, right? So I, I think that adds into like the, the power. I think that Garfield's form is definitely more powerful than Frederica's, but it's all hard to control. We'll see about that. His only option was to escape reality via transformation. Subaru uses Shamok. In fact, probably his final Shamok of the anime. After what do you mean finally? I know your ass is a fucking web novel reader. What do you mean finally? After abusing his broken gate for the last time, it finally collapsed and the connection was severed. 
His gait was dead, but somehow yeah. Subaru still felt a strange power inside his body. In the novel, it's described as a power that doesn't belong to him. Obviously, wriggled inside his body, the witch factor, right? It did look like just weird ball of tentacles just balled up, right? Purple limb, I don't know, it's like a purple string yarn ball making its first cry of birth. As if to bless its arrival, as if to celebrate its birth. Birth of the power? This is weird, bro. The witch factors are... I still don't know really what a witch factor is all about, right? There's the authority associated with it. Archbishops tend to have it. Hmm... Obviously, what he felt was the sloth witch factor. Yeah. As we know, he absorbed it after killing Betelgeuse, and the donut tea helped it settle inside Stimulate his body. Stimulate it, that's after right. that, we just had to wait for Subaru to realize it was there. Upon activation, the witch... But, like... It's not that Subaru was a... It's... it's this isn't, like... A coincidence. That the gate broke and then this power appeared? No! It, it's a very significant moment. There is definitely meaning to the gate breaking and this power forming, but then it's interesting to know that Betelgeuse can use earth magic, meaning his gate is intact, but he still has that. Which makes me think that because Subaru already had the Witch Factor of Envy and has been using the Authority Returned by Death from Satala, which is again, just like a guess, right? We're just guessing here. Maybe the gate breaking signifies him using a second, multiple authorities, and now he'll collect other witch factors and add on to that. I don't know. Witch factor granted him the authority of Sloth just as it did for those that came before him. However, Subaru's version of the authority is a lot weaker than the other- That's right, it's fucking tiny. And people make the connection of how it's just one single hand to wipe away the tears of Satala. ...versions we've seen, and using it causes him a lot of pain. This it is does? likely because Subaru isn't compatible with the Sin of Sloth. Okay! That makes even more sense why it's so weak, right? Even Betelgeuse apparently was not very compatible with the Witch Factor, right? Um, despite that, he was pretty strong. Subaru is just not at all compatible. And that compatibility... What determines a person's compatibility? Does it have to do with the nature of that sin? Because Betelgeuse was a very diligent person that hated being slothful and punished it, actively asked for forgiveness and repay with the love for the witch, right? Does that, is that why? Is this a personality trait? Is there something beyond that? I don't know. But regardless, I think his new authority is definitely going to come in handy. Because of Sekhmet's high... <laughs> One more time. I think his new authority is definitely going to come in handy. Get it, guys? Because hands. Because of Sekhmet's high compatibility with the Sin, her authority of Sloth is extremely powerful and easy to use. Yeah, and if you look at Sekhmet, what do we really know other than her just sticking her gad up there like that? Well, she's always just like resting. And she's always sighing after each word to kind of show how tired and slothful she is. Personality traits, actions, that uh, seems to align with the sin, therefore, is very compatible? I don't know. I think that segment is probably the hottest one. <laughs> I know you degenerates are gonna say fucking Daphne or t -phone, bro. You disgusting lolicons. Segment, Minerva, Echidna, Satala. They're great. t and, and Daphne, get, get that shit out of my face. I feel like I'm missing one. Sekhmet, Minerva, Satala, Echidna. Tifone, Daphne. There's one more I'm missing. Carmilla. Oh yeah, Carmilla's kind of... She's not a lolly, but... I'm good. She's, she's, she's a little too petite for me. But Subaru, who isn't compatible, will have to sustain injuries every time he uses it. Kind of like the Warlock hero power. Excuse me? Authority of Sloth is extremely powerful and easy to use, but Subaru, who isn't compatible, will have to sustain injuries every time he uses it. Damn. So there is a huge toll to it. And the anime, it just seemed like he passed out because of the stress and fatigue built up during the fight with Garfield. But every time we use it, there is a cost with it, and he takes damage physically? Mentally? I don't know, both? Kind of like the Warlock hero power. But Subaru isn't the only one who was incompatible with Sloth. Don't forget that Betelgeuse was possibly the most energetic character in the entire... That's right. Diligence, right? 
Opposite of Sloth, it's a virtue, he's incompatible, personality traits, actions. ...series, making him the complete opposite of Sloth. This yeah. means that whenever he used the Unseen Hand, he probably felt the same amount of pain that Subaru does. <laughs> Is that why he always says Noka Furuaru? The brain trembling? Dude! The more information we get, the more we realize that Betrick is him acting crazy. It's because he's constantly just being mentally and physically tortured by using his power. And he says his brain trembles and we're just laughing. And we're like, haha, funny clown man, do your thing. But he was just suffering the entire time. And we're just laughing at him. If not more. This would explain why we often saw Betelgeuse biting his fingers and yeah. self-harming shortly before using his yeah. authority. The self-harm would redirect pain to a different location on- Oh my god. It makes so much sense. Like, why is he always biting his fingers? Is it because his fucking pawns, the people that can, you know, that he can possess afterwards are also called fingers? I don't- but it's, it's making so much. So much more sense. On his body, making it easier to ignore the pain caused by using his authority. To be clear though, that isn't confirmed, it's just a theory I came up with to make- I love that theory, and I think that it does make sense. Other than, wh what else is the theory then, right? Uh, it's the reasoning of why Betrigus is always just biting and just fucking himself up, right? Before using a power. Just random theatrics to be a madman? Maybe. But I feel like Nagatsuki Tape wouldn't do something just as simple like that for the sake of being a madman. Makes sense of everything. Something I am certain of is that both Subaru and Betelgeuse were absolutely not compatible with the sloth factor, which raises the question, hmm. why did Betelgeuse have it? I don't know, bro. And maybe we're going to learn in pre-frozen bond information if we ever touch upon that in the latter half of season two because he seems to exist back then with mother fortuna and knows amelia as amelia mentioned goose when she when she got the memories back anyway i was beyond hyped when i f oh what is this first read this moment in the novels we've all been waiting a very long time oh it's the fucking chuni naming deep inside the being known as himself something set down roots asserting as its own existence the witch factor super did not even know if the heat it bore was hot or cold yet the strange feeling of something black and stagnant circulating in super uh, natsuki from the corner to corner gave him some idea to what it is Therefore, he asked not why or how or even what for. There was no reason to ponder such thing. That left only one matter for him to worry about. Invisible blow. <laughs> Unseen palms. Blind side impact. <laughs> Unseen fingers. No, unseen hand? Unseen arms, bro. Unseen limbs. How about that? We're trying to be copyright friendly right now, right? Each sounded atrociously derivative. They weren't stylish at all. These were arms that none save Subaru could ever see. And none save Subaru might ever control. Really? Really? You telling me that no one can see this shit? Other archbishops cannot see the invisible providence? Or at least that's what I'm reading in the passage. These were arms that none save Subaru could ever see. Hmm. And none save Subaru might ever control accordingly. A divine will unseen by the eye. Therefore, I dub thee invisible providence. Wow. For Subaru to get a power upgrade in this episode, it finally happened. Invisible providence is what yeah. he calls it, but it is in fact the same authority that was used by Sekhmet, Battlegeuse, <laughs> and Satella. And Satella too. Yeah, Satella does have the hand shit. And one has to wonder, why does she also have the hand shit? Because she consumed all the other witches? Right? And he, here's another question, right? Betrigus is dead right now. So I can't really ask him, Hey, Betrigus, can you still use your unseen hand? But Sekhmet is also dead, yet she uses unseen hand. She's a soul right now, but she is an actual witch. Maybe witches have a totally different rule set that they play by. I'm not sure. Sekhmet, Betrigus, and Satella. So now that Subaru can... And you know the thing that they said about the witch factors? About how each power, the power being authority, is not always the same. It will differ and adapt to that person's personality. I remember that being a real thing, right? That's why we're like, oh shit, you get the slot factor. What kind of different power is Subaru going to have? Because the authority should adapt to each person's different desires and what they are. Yet... It's just, just still the same thing. It's just, it's just shitty invisible 
hands, you know? I don't know. And officially use the unseen hand, he's probably going to be training his new authority every day with some lotion and a picture of Amelia. But does this mean... Nah, that's a good question to ask. Will he ever fucking wank it with his unseen hand? <laughs> What, what would that even look like when you get caught? Because no one can see it. No one can see you crank it. You're, you're basically just sitting there and yeah, it's just an invisible hand just cranking it. You have no clue. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's new authority every day with some lotion and a picture of Amelia. <laughs> but the, the better gives do something, dude. The better gives also, and he has multiple hands, right? The other hands can do some other things to stimulate himself, but. <laughs> But does this mean Subaru is now the Sin Archbishop of Sloth? Um, good question. An even better question is, has Subaru always been the Sin Archbishop of Envy, a position that never ex existed? Because obviously, you know, Satala fucking ate them all and the witches, and for some reason, it, it just feels like Satala ate all them witches and gave the witch factors to the cult members. Maybe not Satala, it's the Witch of Envy, right? Two separate characters, two separate personalities because of the incompatibility, incompatibility with Satala and her own witch factor, right? Uh, I mean, he ain't joined a fucking church, but I bet maybe he is kind of almost there. He needs a gospel. We have a gospel. <laughs> we have his gospel, actually. Are we a bishop? Not until the church recognizes us. I know some of you are going to be wondering that, so the answer is no. no. But also yes, but mostly no. no because not of yet. Because of factor, Subaru is currently the only person in ReZero with the qualifications to become the Sin Archbishop of Sloth. But mm -hmm. to do so, he would have to join the Witch Cult. Archbishop is actually just a- So it's just that, huh? The church has to just acknowledge him. You have to have the Witch Factor, have the authority maybe. You need to have a gospel and then, I don't know, the church has to acknowledge you. Title given to a Witch Cultist who possesses a Witch Factor. The important part is the Witch- One more, one more who possesses a witch factor. The That's important it. part is the witch factor and not so much the title itself. Got it. It says people with the witch factors are deemed archbishops by the cult. Even more so if you're actually part of the cult. Subaru is not a part of the cult. So he's just rogue dude with the witch factor of sloth. And perhaps even envy. Most likely envy. I want to believe he has two witch factors. So yes, Natsuki Subaru is kind of an archbishop. He has all the powers of an archbishop. He just isn't called an archbishop. Though if he did happen to join the witch cult, he would be given the title Archbishop of Sloth. And if Return by Death is what I think it is, Envy. he would also be given the title Archbishop of Envy. Yes! Yes! I totally agree. But here's the thing. I, for some reason, it just... There was a specific passage in the light novel or the web novel where it talks about how Subaru's power isn't really his. It feels it's borrowed by Satala. Therefore, it feels like even if we have the pact that exists with Satala, where Echidna has confirmed that, and we lost our memories, most likely due to that pact, uh, uh, just this theories, feels like the witch factor. It just feels like we're again, just using it as a proxy. Like, which, like, the, like this invisible providence is coming from within us. We have the witch factor there, but the witch factor of like, envy and the authority of envy, it feels like it's like a, some kind of proxy, some sort of borrowed power. Patrush! Garfield is defeated after Best Girl uses her finishing move, which was also used against Betelgeuse in season one. He definitely got his ass kicked, but Garfield did wake up in the best way possible, though. Ram, peak, girl. If anyone deserves me. a lap pillow from Rom, it's definitely Garfield. The moment I knew I shipped it was when. And because we're still committing to Romji for Ram. <laughs> Just imagining a lap pillow by Romji, bro. I mean, he's, he's big as fuck. I bet it'd be kind of comfortable, right? That's like a king size mattress if you think about it. The surface area of his, of his thighs. But it'd also be kind of bulky and maybe not comfortable. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Roswell stuck his hand through both of them, and Garfield immediately tried to heal Rom's injury without even thinking about himself. You can tell that he really does care about yep. Rom, and his romantic feelings are much deeper than just a crush. But unfortunately, I think Garfield might be too young for her. I don't know how old Ram is, but yeah, Garfield is 14. But that does seem like the main ship, right? It's Ram and Garfield. I think that they're a very charming couple if we... You know, the 14 part and... 
he's, he's a demi-human. I don't know how the fuck culture works here, bro. Mm-hmm. We've known for a while now that something in Garfield's backstory was traumatic enough that he wasn't able to pass the trials. Well, after Subaru fisted him and taught him a lesson, Garfield finally decided to attempt the trial again. Let's take a look at Garfield's traumatic past. Meme incoming? Something funny, please. Give me something funny. Meme. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Rudy is cheek the fuck up. I for, I for, this is some season one content, but he is cheek the fuck up. Look at this. Look at all that meat he has back in. Oh my god. Sorry, sorry. I played the wrong clip. Here yeah. is Garfield's traumatic all right. past. Okay, we're not memeing anymore. Yes. Also. Probably a good idea. Soup, something about the title, something about fisting an 8th grader, something about invisible pop, hand, I don't know, we'll, we'll think about it. Because of his mother, Garfield was plagued by grief and abandonment for most of his life. But after the development he went through this episode, he was finally able to get through the trial, to which he emerged a completely different character. He smiles and blushes for the first time, and mm -hmm. even starts calling Subaru boss. boss. In the web novel, it was Captain, which I thought sounded better, but at least it isn't general like it was in the light novel. The point is, Garfield is now someone who looks up to Subaru, and that's an amazing development that didn't seem possible just a few episodes ago. That's right. Powerful ally gains he has submitted under us. Things are looking great. Now, if Amila can just clear the sanctuary, we can go to the mansion. We have more strong people to fight against Elsa and Melee. Things are looking good. And finally, the mystery is solved. The reason Subaru broke his promise with Amelia is to vandalize the kid in his graveyard. Mm -hmm. was to sneak into the tomb and draw her a bunch of pictures or love letters to motivate her while she's so taking the pups. trial. The episode leaves us with another big cliffhanger. Best girl appears in Amelia's trial and just starts roasting her entire existence. Yeah, Echidna hates Satala. Echidna also hates Amelia. Coincidence? I think not. I don't know. Um, I don't know what their history is, but she did kind of seems to hint that she knows of Amelia. Right, based on when Subaru first arrived at the tomb, and she's like, "Oh, so that's what the root of your desire is." Interesting. It's possibly ending her whole career. She calls her a loose woman. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Loose woman, bro. <laughs> what a fucking insult, bro. And you, you know, Amelia's a virgin. She, she is a wholesome angel. Loose woman. A shameless fool. A selfish hedonist. And finally. A witch's daughter. Yeah, witch's daughter was crazy, and I'm thinking metaphorical. And then Amelia herself confirms that I am the daughter of the witch, the uh, uh, something about the white witch of the fucking Elior Force or something. Are they just self-proclaimed shit or what? <laughs> Now, this could be a major revelation about Amelia's identity, could or it be. could just be a racist insult about her appearance. I don't it know! It would be kind of odd for Dona to use Witch's Daughter as an insult, considering she's a w uh, Yeah, exactly. They're all witches, too. And if you wanted to use Witch as an insult, more people refer to the witch as a fucking devil. Witch herself, but it doesn't seem like she's very fond of Amelia, so she could just be trying to piss her off. Regardless, it didn't work. Amelia now has the same confidence we've been seeing Natsuki in Subaru Subaru pose. recently, and she even copies his pose to prove it. <laughs> kind of wanted her to stick her ass out like that. It's not the complete pose if you don't, you know, the hip. It's a two-part pose, right? You have to stick it up, but your hip also has to stick out like that. And Amelia is becoming more like Subaru. And it's a good thing. The good part to Subaru seems like. Goes to prove it. And with that, I think Amelia now has everything she needs to pass this trial. Yep, another 10 out of 10 episode. This might have been the best episode since the rabbit scene. It had a few cuts as every episode has to, but I think this was a near perfect adaptation. I yeah. know I always give every episode. Yeah, every. No, not every. There was that one episode where you gave it like a 15 out of 10. But a 10 out of 10, but this episode really does deserve it. I'm seeing a lot of improvements over the first core, and I hope they continue yeah. adapting the second core with exactly the same quality this episode had. Before All right. I go, I want to plug my Twitter again. If you haven't heard, Kadokawa. Y'all, yeah, Kadokawa, copyright strike, but he got over it. Hey, please go give Mr. Echidna's video a like. Check out his channel. Here is the link. And I will see you next time.